Hi, I'm Josh Bloom. Welcome to another video in the RSP Supply Education Series. If you find that these videos are helpful to you, it certainly helps us out if you could give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. In today's video, we're, we are going to be talking about some very common diagrams and drawings that are used by many different types of people, including but not limited to building contractors, engineers, electricians, control integrators, and many others. I am referring to a P and ID, which is short for Piping and Instrumentation Diagram. As its name suggests, these drawings show the various piping configurations within a building or plant environment and how the process within those pipes are managed. When first looking at a P&ID drawing, they can be very intimidating and hard to understand. However, with a little bit of information and some basic instruction, they can be very easy to read and incredibly helpful in, the, in planning and in the fabrication of systems that interface or are directly related to the processes referenced in the PNID. For the purpose of this video, we hope to provide you with a very basic level of understanding of what a PNID is and how you might go about interpreting one of these types of drawings. Please keep in mind that there are an unlimited number of ways a PNID can be drawn and configured. However, in general, they tend to follow some basic guidelines and principles that make them somewhat universal. With that said, it is always important to reference each PNID and its accompanying reference tables and legends to make sure what you are reading is interpreted correctly. If you have questions about the drawing that you are viewing, please make sure to seek the help of a qualified person that can provide you with the necessary instruction that you may need. With that said, let's talk about some of the basic principles that make up a PNID and how we can understand them better. As mentioned before, PNID stands for Piping and Instrumentation Diagram. Its intended purpose is to provide information about the piping and material in those pipes. It also references devices and instrumentation that interface with the piping and is intended to control, monitor, move, or store whatever is in the pipe, whether it's a gas or liquid. Within the diagram, it will provide detailed information about the actual pipe that is required and what types of instrumentation need to be used and more importantly, where in the process they need to be located. Some examples of devices and instruments that are commonly found in a PID drawing include things like valves, pumps, flow measuring devices, pressure sensors, collection devices like tanks, and many other types of process equipment. The PNID will show whether an instrument like a pressure sensor is intended to be monitored locally at the device itself or whether it will have a transmitter and send that information to a PLC and HMI where the data is historized and can provide trending information. While most PNIDs use very similar guidelines to reference the various piping and instrumentation that is used, they are not all the same. And sometimes the codes and symbols that are used can vary slightly. With that said, it is very important to reference the various tables and legends within the PNID. These tables and legends provide valuable information that will help distinguish what the different symbols might mean. For example, in one PNID, there might be several different types of the same kind of hardware, like a valve. Many of these valves will be drawn in almost the same way, making them hard to distinguish from one another. The PNID legend will provide the information that is needed to be able to tell which kind of valve the drawing is referencing. This legend will also provide information about other things in the drawing as well. For instance, PNIDs typically have several different line types. Each line type will reference something different. For example, a solid line is likely referencing some kind of piping while a dotted line might be referencing an electrical communication line. As you can imagine, this can become very confusing if time is not taken in the beginning to read the reference tables and legends to ensure that the information is being interpreted correctly. 
These are just a few of the simple guidelines you need to follow in order to understand these drawings. With some practice and a little information, reading PNIDs will become a lot easier. In our next video in this brief series, we will talk in more detail about some of the codes and symbols that are used and how to read them, as well as some other valuable information regarding PNID drawings. So make sure to look out for that video when it becomes available. For a full line of industrial hardware and thousands of other products, please go to our website. For more information or other educational videos, go to rspsupply.com, the internet's top source for industrial hardware. Also don't forget, like and subscribe.